Welcome friends, in this video, let's discuss about sedimentary cycle. This sedimentary cycle is a part of biogeochemical cycle. In our previous videos, we have discussed about gaseous cycle like uh, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen. Okay, in this video, let's discuss about sedimentary cycle. Okay, uh, this include phosphorus and sulfur cycle. So, the elements like phosphorus, calcium, magnesium and sulfur circulates by means of sedimentary cycle. Okay, they circulate by means of sedimentary cycle. Okay. And the elements, these elements does not cycle through the atmosphere. This is important. This does not cycle through the atmosphere, but follows a basic pattern of flow through various means like weathering, erosion, sedimentation, mountain building, volcanic activity, and biological transport of excreta of marine birds. And so th through these means, these elements like phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur circulate through the ecosystem. Okay. And the first thing is phosphorus cycle. So this phosphorus has an important role in aquatic ecosystem and water quality. Okay, if the phosphorus is, is present in more than the required proportion, if it is, it is if, it, if it is present in more quantity in the water body, for example, in in lake, it may lead to instable uh, situation and it acts as a pollutant. For example, uh, if if the water body has more phosphates, okay, and phosphorus. And this will lead to the growth of uh, 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 growth of green plants and blue green algae and other harmful algal blooms in the pond ecosystem because it acts as a nutrient. This will multiply the growth of these plant bodies in the ecosystem. So this will lead to a condition called eutrophication. Okay, eutrophication. This is a, an anomaly, and this eutrophication may be a threat to the pond ecosystem. This may altogether collapse the whole. Uh, whole balance of the ecosystem itself so the phosphorus the heart the, the healthy balance of phosphorus in the ecosystem is very much essential of for for balanced uh, ecosystem approach okay and the source of phosphorus in the environment is through mineral deposits okay mineral in phosphate rocks okay and this enters the cycle of erosion and mining activity okay uh, the the phosphorus enters the cycle through erosion as well as mining activity this is the one thing and the so storage the source of uh, phosphorus is the earth crust not the atmosphere please mind it it is, the, it is the earth crust which is the source of phosphorus okay on land it is found in the form of phosphates okay phosphates and these uh, the, the these phosphate rocks undergoes weathering okay weathering that is weathering on the surface of the phosphate rocks lead to uh, weathering away of the uh, certain portion of the phosphate rocks and this will be carried out through erosion okay and these phosphates enter the river and streams okay and again this is again transported to oceans so this uh, by this way the phosphorus cycle will be initiated so this picture will clear your all your doubts here the plants and animals after the death undergoes decomposition okay the detritus organisms like called saprophytes uh, decays uh, these uh, the plant and animal source the saprophytes here include fungi bacteria and algae and uh, all the microorganisms along with earthworms so these decay the organic uh, matter and they convert this into elemental forms and other organic carbon here one of the such product is the phosphorus also from this decayed organic carbon so this will add phosphorus to the soil as well as the uh, certain rock okay in, in the present in the soil okay uh, this is the one thing uh, the contribution of phosphorus uh, to the ecosystem okay phosphorus is also present in the phosphatic rocks so this the phosphorus present in the soil as well as phosphatic rocks will be eroded okay through by the way of runoff into the nearby water bodies okay like a river ocean pond whatever okay and this water bodies again will carry uh, the phosphorus to the uh, final destination called oceans okay oceans in the ocean but the phosphates in solution will be deposited deep under the rocks okay oceanic rocks so this oceanic rocks um, will be a rep uh, repository for this phosphorus okay and this oceanic rocks will be uplifted okay uh, through a millions of years of time it will be up, upliftment will be happening okay we all know that there will be upliftment of land uh, over a period of time so this upliftment and mountain building activities brings the uh, rock uh, so phosphorus that is deposited 
uh, under the oceanic rocks okay and this upliftment will also lead to weathering and weathering also after that erosion after that our uh, erosion this will carry its runoff uh, again to the uh, water bodies so in this way the phosphorus cycle will be continuing but the human interference okay uh, human uh, human beings produce phosphorus uh, by by way of industrialization uh, by the production of uh, fertilizers okay and these fertilizers are used in the agricultural operations okay for growing plants okay various phosphorus fertilizers like mono ammonium phosphate dap important source of phosphorus okay diammonium phosphate triammonium phosphate single super phosphate these are all the important fertilizers used in the agriculture operations okay these add more phosphorus to the ecosystem so this will be run off uh, from the agricultural lands by way of soil erosion and water erosion this enters the water bodies okay land uh, okay for example lake and other ponds so this in, in the lake and ponds it leads to the condition called eutrophication that i have discussed with you already so this is the harmful effect of interfering in the phosphorus cycle okay by the human beings the another important cycle is sulfur cycle so this is also one of the sedimentary cycle okay and the reservoir for this sulfur sulfur cycle as like in phosphorus cycle is also the soil and sediments where it is locked in organic okay in organic sources like coal oil and peat okay these are the organic sources for the sulfur and inorganic deposits like pyrite rocks and sulfur rocks okay in the form of sulfates sulfides and organic sulfur so both organic and inorganic sources are there for the uh, elemental sulfur okay and this is released by just like in phosphorus cycle by weathering of rocks erosion runoff and decomposition of organic matter and carried to the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem okay terrestrial means forest and grassland ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem is ocean river and other lake ecosystem in the form of salt solution salt solution means it is dissolved in water okay so the sulfur salt is dissolved in water it is transported in the form of salt solution so the most important uh, uh, characteristic of uh, sulfur cycle here is that it is acting both as a sedimentary cycle as well as gaseous cycle okay the hydrogen components like uh, hydrogen sulfide H2S and sulfur dioxide SO2 also interacts with the atmosphere along with the sedimentary cycle. So this is important point. The sulfur cycle acts as both sedimentary cycle and gaseous cycle. Okay, please remember. And the sources of a sulfur include the volcanic eruptions. Okay, volcanic eruptions also contribute sulfur to the atmosphere and combustion of fossil fuels. Okay, uh, from the surface. Also, it also released from the surface in the oceans and gases released by way of decomposition so this uh, this diagram will uh, clear your doubts this volcanic eruptions will re release hydrogen sulfide sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere and uh, the sea sprays from the sea will also contribute sulfur dioxide to the atmosphere and uh, the the living organisms present in the ocean also contribute reduced compounds of sulfur by way of biogenic emissions okay and again uh, the Sulfur dioxide present in the uh, in the atmosphere is returned back to the earth by way of rain and other deposition. Okay, acid rains is one of them, and it is again reached into the oceans. And also the coastal biogenic emissions is also contributes a reduced sulfur compounds into the atmosphere. And sulfur dioxide is also uh, come back to the earth. Uh, that, that is soil surface in the form of dry deposition and other uh, sources of sulfur include uh, the industries okay industries and the biogenic emissions uh, fossil fuel emissions and all these contribute sulfur to the ecosystem along with that the sedimentary cycle se sedimentary source of sulfur is also there and this uh, uplift upliftment of land and weathering erosion runoff is also happening here okay this is sulfur cycle so human beings are also interfering in the sulfur cycle okay by way of burning of coal natural gas and other fossil fuels okay this has greatly increased the amount of uh, uh, sulfur in the atmosphere so it is and and and, and depleted sedimentary rock sink okay without human impact okay human sulfur would have stayed tied up tied up in the rock for millions of years we if we have not uh, 
excavated the sulfur from the sulfur rocks, it would have been locked in the uh, in the sulfur sources for millions of years. So until it was uplifted through tectonic events and then released to the erosion and weathering process. But human beings are interfering here, and the, he is is extracting the sulfur for its own needs. So this is the, an important interference by human beings into the sulfur cycle. So this has increased the concentration of sulfur uh, in the ecosystem by 30 fold okay by way of sulfur deposition so this is also leading to the other deleterious effect like acid rains and atmospheric pollutants like sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide exactly etc so thank you thanks for watching and here for the previous uh, videos on, on environment and ecology uh, click here you'll get this thanks thanks for giving me this opportunity